Hey guys, so my name is Sarah and welcome back to my channel. I thought that today we could do a bit of a recent reads video where I just talk about the mm, like five latest books that I've read. Um, and so I hope you enjoy. And if there's any background noise, uh, I gave my cat some catnip recently and they're a little bit a little bit special. <laughs> All right, so the first book that I want to talk to you guys about is Letters to a Young Muslim by Omar Saf Gobash. And this book, somewhat like, I don't really like this comparison, but it's what I've been hearing a lot, um, Between the World and Me by Tanasi Coates, is um, Omar Saf Gobash's letters to his two younger sons. The topic, the scope of the novel is how to reconcile being a Muslim in a world that often deals with extremes and tries to polarize, makes one not have lived realities as much as just trying to make you fit into like certain extremes. Um, and the author makes it a point to say that this is not like a theological text, like he's not trying to define what true um, Islam is versus just how his sons can navigate their realities and how questioning is key to human experience and to just finding your place within the world. Um, and Omar Saf Gobash comes from a political background. Uh, his father was the prime minister i believe i'm 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 blanking on the exact correct title um but he was a key political person who was assassinated when omar asaf gobash was six i believe and that has impacted his life quite severely and he mentions this a lot in the novel he's currently the russian ambassador in the united arab emirates so it was really an informative book. I don't, I'm not very knowledgeable on Islam history. Um, I don't, I don't know enough and I want to learn more. So that was very, it was very informative and the way that it was written was also tailored to younger audience because um, his oldest son I believe is 10. So it was very like palatable. It did leave me wanting like more. I gave it three out of five stars, um, but I still think it was a really important book that one should read and that more people need to read, but it left me wanting to read more. So I'm like considering that perhaps it was better to perhaps give it like four stars rather than three, but I'm still like, cause I've been thinking about it and I've read this book like a month ago or more. I definitely recommend it. I'm gonna link a talk that um poetics and po and politics i think it's a bookstore in washington dc i think or in washington um did with him so i'll link that below so you can check that out in case you want to hear more about the book especially if you've read it because it's quite it's quite good then i read miss Var miss marvel volumes three through five um which willa wilson wrote and the illustrators changed per volume but um there was Elmo, Bendok, Adrian Alfona, and Takeshi Miyazawa. Sorry, I can't read my own handwriting. <laughs> Made little notes so that I don't like completely mess up this uh, recent talks. Um, and so I thought that it was a really great continuation of the series. I really love Kamala Khan. Uh, I think she's such an important character. I don't want to spoil it, so I'm not going to really talk plot, uh, but I fully, fully, fully recommend this series. It tackles really important topics, um, gentrification, just like um, Muslim community visibility, uh, there's uh, queer community representation within it, um, it even has like really like subtle but uh, critiques like how a lot of more like bougie vegan types like me even though I don't really think that like I don't I know of this so I try to be aware but like how oftentimes uh they care more about human rights than other like I mean more care more about animal rights than human rights like the migrant workers who like but pick your vegetables especially like the organic variables vegetables like caring more about the animals than the people who are picking your food um and it's just like really small like 
pokes but you you, you, you see them and that's impactful um i did have one small critique is that in volume five we are spending a lot more time with the avengers which i mean the avengers are awesome don't get me wrong but i just really like kamala's world i like seeing her interactions with her family i like seeing her like interact with her schoolmates i just i prefer that to just the typical avengers world like i know that they're really important in certain ways but um outside of the black panther most of them are white and Tony Stark's a douchebag. Like, I don't, I don't know. It's just not as interesting to me. But I think that the way that Volume 5 ended, that it will not focus so heavily on the Avengers next time. Hopefully. So we'll see. But, and I think also that um, Rincey from Rincey Reads said the same thing, that she's kind of disappointed about how heavily the Avengers were um, stealing kind of the story in this past one. Um, so, but yeah, please check out Miss Marvel. It's great, great, great comic and just, it's funny, it's witty, um, yeah, it's just good. <laughs> and then I wanted to talk to you about The History of Wolves by Emily Friendland. And this follows Linda as she navigates kind of her coming of age, like her early high school and then it follows her throughout her life but it starts off in early high school when she's she's trying to reconcile the fact that she comes from a um, hippie commune background like her parents were part of a hippie commune and when she reached like early middle school um, the commune broke off and so she just was left with her two parents but there were still the rumors that there had been kind of a cult there um and she's just trying to live her life when across the lake uh, a family moves in pacha and phil um and leo who is not as present but who is the father in the family and she starts to have a very close-knit bond with Pacha and Paul she's their babysitter um and it follows them and all their interactions and hers with her family but it also follows her fascination with wolves but it's not like the actual animal wolf it's like you know what wolves represent like the darker like more threatening um side of humanity a definite trigger warning for this book it, it does have a lot of abuse in it um it's not like heavily handed heavy handed um but there is some triggering moments for rape and such and um also like abuse like neglect abuse um Jerry, you are high off your ass, bud. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> uh, I love you anyway, though. Okay? Now be quiet. <laughs> so Linda is a fascinating character. She is very aware of the more predatory aspects of human behavior. And rather than shy away from them, she almost glorifies it and seeks out that behavior she sees it in herself as well i'm not quite sure how she immediately is aware of it but she is um and so that adds an extra nuance to all of her interactions and experiences because she is not a involuntary player to the events that take place um it's debatable since she's a child how much um how much blame one could put on her as a character with what happens in the novel uh but at the same time she makes it a point to state that she was aware <laughs> so it's a really really fascinating book and it's not at all what I expected. I kind of went into it blind. I just knew that it's called The History of Wolves and it took place in a very cold setting and that the book was a beautiful object as a book. And that's all I knew. So 
but it turned out to be quite good and the poet the prose is quite poetic um there's a part where she's talking about how winter was heavy and how it laid down and just stayed on the town which i really love imagery like that so um, I think this is her first novel, so I'm quite looking forward to reading more of what she does because for a debut, I thought it was quite quite well done. And then I wanted to talk to you about Mr. Splitfoot, which is a novel by Samantha Hunt. And Mr. Splitfoot follows two primary uh, timelines. One follows Ruth and Nate, two young orphans who have been fostered in a... Um, in a home that has a religious fanatic and it's very like cult-like and quite worrisome. Um, Ruth and Nate have a very fascinating like bond. They call each other sisters. Um, it is not clear that Nate identifies as anything other than a man but he still views Ruth as a sister and he as a sister as well. Um, and the secondary timeline follows more in the present and this follows Cora who is Ruth's niece. Cora has always been fascinated by Ruth. Ruth does not talk um, in the present timeline. We don't know why she doesn't talk. Uh, you know obviously since you start in this like cold setting you're like hmm, maybe something terrible happened but you don't really know why. Um, and so in the present, Cora is rendered pre pregnant by her um, abusive, mentally abusive boyfriend who is also married. Um, and there's an event that's kind of traumatic. And so she decides to follow Cora as Cora takes her on this intense walk. They don't, she did, Cora doesn't know where they're walking. They're just going. Um, and she just kind of needs a change in her life so she doesn't tell her mom um, Elle she, and she just goes um, and as the storyline continues um, as it unrolls there's their two stories like the present and the past start to come together um, and what's interesting about this novel is that while it could easily fall into that typical cult narrative, it doesn't. It stays still something of its own. Um, there's a lot more of a like slower pace and character understanding. You like learn to understand Ruth through both Cora's experience and through the past. Um, same thing with Nate. Uh, and they're, the characters are very layered. I often find that for like cult narratives, it becomes more about the events of the cult and the characters are somewhat lost. Like maybe the cult leader has a very um, layered self, but the people who are part of the cult are purposely like washed away. Here, even though that they were forced in this cult setting, they still had very distinct personalities. And there's also like a little bit of a magical like realism feel. There are certain events that at the start of the novel do not make sense and you wonder what's happening. Because one of the things I forgot to mention which are which is important is that um, with time Ruth and Nate start to uh, perform as mediums. Um, and there's always kind of a, there's a play on like how much is it them being actual mediums and are is there anything like spiritually strange happening um and what playing that role what impact playing that role can have on you as a person so it was quite good that one i gave three out of five stars uh i listened to it on audiobook i am cognizant of the fact if i didn't listen to it on audiobook it may have been a four star read but i did listen to it on audiobook so i can just judge it from my own experience um so that was good and then the next book that i wanted to talk to you guys about is the burning page by genevieve cogman um this is part of the invisible library series um, I admire the magic system in this series as well as the relationships between Irene, Cal, and Val, Kai, Cal, it's K-A-I for the secondary character that I said, um, and Val, um, 
I think that there's a lot of play on these character interactions and Sherlock so take that for what it's worth um, I like the series obviously since I've been reading it I think this is book three or four I'm not really sure which um, but I wouldn't buy it I would only read it from the library so you know it's a decent fantasy urban fantasy fantasy it's like a victorian urban fantasy with like a library i can try to link my first excuse me my review where i talk about the first book in the series i don't want to spoil it so i'm not really going to say much um two out of five stars good read not anything super special but i still love it because it's a magical world based on a library and the magic is based on words i mean you know I'm a sucker what can I say and then the last book that I wanted to talk about is Moon Call by Patricia Briggs definitely not something that I would have expected myself to pick up normally but one of my colleagues recommended it to me because we were talking about badass female characters I was talking about Jessica Jones and she brought up Mercy Thompson so Mercy Thompson is a mechanic um, in a more colder area I can't remember where I know that she most of the novel place takes place in Montana which may or may not be where I am now it's quite easy to figure out that it's where I'm at now <laughs> um and so uh, that much kinship feelings there about when she talks about how cold it is here today is a nice day clearly I'm in an overall in a very light sweater um <laughs> but so we follow mercy thompson uh, mercy thompson has an opening in her mechanic shop and she notices a young werewolf he's not admitting that he's a werewolf but he's looking for a job and she takes him in is feeling quite like warm towards him like friend um and then he gets killed and so from that point on mercy who is a were coyote i should specify um tries to figure out what happened why he was killed and you know so on and so forth it's a very like urban fantasy type style book um but I really like Mercy's character she's really fun um she's really sassy she doesn't take shit from anybody which I love I can get behind um and yeah, I don't think that this is going to win any like writing awards, but it's fun. I like a woman who stands up for herself and it's just good, good audiobook read, man. The character, the, I think, what was L Lorelai something, Lorelai King reads the audiobook and she did a good job. I mean, I felt kind of eh about like some of the accents she did because I just think that they might have been too stereotyped. Um, but outside of that, I enjoyed it. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not really sure about how Native Americans were represented in here because they're mentioned a few times and I definitely did not like that aspect because I just thought they were too flat. Like I love it when you mention like Native Americans because I think it's important to like see characters that are like yourselves. I'm not Native American, I'm just saying at large. Um, but yeah so i i liked it i gave it three out of five stars i think i might listen to the other audiobooks at work because it was just like a fun thing to like be listening to like i laughed out loud quite a few times um and yeah so those are my recent reads i'll probably do another video like this because i'm feeling like talking about some of the books i've been reading even though i might have read some a lot later than now like earlier later <laughs> Um, but yeah so I hope that you enjoyed this rambly video I know I'm still working on getting better at wording things I wrote down a bunch of ideas see all this beautiful writing but I didn't remember everything and so you know one day I will be as coherent in the vocal voice as I am in my written voice those of you who know me when I write know that I am much more succinct and well-spoken in my written voice. What can you do? Practice makes perfect, right? So that's why we're practicing. <laughs> anyway, I hope that you have a lovely day. Happy Monday, because I think this will probably go up on Monday, maybe. If I put it on Sunday, 
happy Sunday, but I don't really think I'm gonna edit it all. So we'll see. Anyway, have a lovely day, evening, afternoon, and be well. <laughs>